Jeff Reinbold, the coach, coffee with the coach, joins us today where it's early out there in Hawaii. I enjoy, I appreciate you getting up, coach, and let's jump right into it, man, if you don't mind. What happened on that field goal at the end of the game last night? I just, he just choked it. And, you know, it, you, you play golf, Rod. You know what it's like. It was a tap in, and he didn't get it in. Mm. You know, you, you look at the kicking in around the league, and it's it was problematic last year for a lot of clubs, and it's, you know, same thing. Uh, you know, the, Toronto was three for five. Hamilton doinked one off the post when they were in Saskatchewan last week. The kicking's got to improve. When you look at a guy like Brett Lowther, you understand why they went out and re-signed him to a, to a contract, big contract for a kicker this past offseason. Dickey understands the importance of the kicking game, and especially when you're out on the prairies, you better have a guy that can get it through the pipes. Well, if I may, you built your name on special teams, and I, I what I felt last night when watching that game was you don't respect the kicker enough until you don't have one or until he misses a field goal. Is it disrespected in, uh, in the CFL or maybe even pro football, the position? Well, you know, when they narrowed the when they narrowed the hashes, you thought that the field goal kicking was going to improve because now basically you're like the NFL. You're right in front of the pipes the whole way, and we do have the wider pipes. It's just right now that there is inconsistency. You know, you've got new holders, new new snappers in some cases. Cote's going to be okay, but you know, and he's going to win some games down the stretch for, for the Owls, but this was a big one because they needed to even it up and get to one and one, and for Toronto, it was a huge home win. Uh, interestingly, by the way, you mentioned the narrower hash marks. I went in and looked at the field goal percentages last week. It was 23 of 25 combined in the CFL. Seemed almost negligible to me. Hamilton's guy missed one, and I can't remember the other. Are we going to see a difference in that stat as the season goes along, do you think? Well, you should. You know, And the reason for narrowing the, the, the hashes was to create more offense and you know take away that wide field out that nobody can throw and and make the will linebacker you know be more of an athlete trying to help the offenses but it should also help the kicking game because those field goal kickers now don't have the drastic angle that they had previously when the hashes were wider i hope it improves the kicking in the league because you know for example hamilton last year you know, doggone if we don't uh win a great cup, I think, if we have better field goal kicking. And their punting has improved. They went out and got an American punter. People are people are understanding the fact that you have got to be able to punt and kick the ball effectively in this league if you're going to have long-term success. You worry about Winnipeg that way. You know, you worry about Hamilton that way. I think you look at Lowther, and, and he's the one guy that you can say, if I had one kick to make, I, I'm going to send him out there, and I think he's going to hammer it through. Oh, man, I, I, we can spend the whole segment on this. I just want to throw in some comments here from the viewers. Uh, Kent Ridley's watching in Nashville. Hey, Coach, hope you're doing great. Ryan in Saratoga, New York. Aloha, Coach. Reinbold, good to see you on TV again. There's all kinds of uh, comments from the viewers here. They love you, Coach, as you know. Cortez told me last time we talked, about a month ago, he's in Houston, as you know. He said when they narrowed the hash in the NFL in the 70s, rushing stats went way up. I don't think higher than passing attempts but do you expect that how, how will how will this affect the offenses well again the, the reason the rushing stats went up is you know you couldn't use the sideline as an extra defender into the boundary so the same thing's going to happen i think in the cfl the offensive coaches because again we did we didn't we have not had long preseason we don't have four preseason games like they had in the nfl at that time we don't have training camp that starts two months before the first regular season game i think the coaches are still working it out themselves about how can i take advantage of the fact that i've got more field to the weak side to work and open up not only the passing game but the running game i think you know you look at the teams around the league and right now if i had a if i had a critique to give saskatchewan it's they've got to find a running game Last week, their two running backs averaged less than three yards a carry. The same thing's true for Hamilton. You got to take some of the pressure off of your offensive lineman, and you got to run the football. You mentioned uh, the scoring being up. I think I read in the game notes it's up 33% uh, week one, year over year. So if that's what they were hoping to accomplish, temporarily it seems like they did. Ottawa, 
Winnipeg tonight. They're excited in Ottawa. They felt they took a major step forward last week, but they still lost, as you know. Another last-minute loss there. How, how, what are you seeing out of the Red Black? Well, I see Mazzoli has made a huge impact. They were abysmal throwing the football last year, Rod. They couldn't throw the ball at all. He gives them a chance. You know, if Ackland doesn't drop that long touchdown pass, he has probably close to 400 yards of throwing against, a, you know, the Great Cup champions at their place in the first game. So they're more dynamic offensively. I think Ackland, you know, he'll catch that ball nine out of 10 times. He's, ha- he's going to be their wide receiver one. Mazzoli, his mobility in the pocket. When you watched, you know, they had a free runner, Winnipeg, on, uh, on Shaq Johnson's touchdown. Winnipeg has a free runner off the edge, and Jeremiah shakes him and steps up in the pocket and delivers the ball in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. That throw was why you went out and got Jeremiah Mazzoli. So he's going to be, I think, the X factor. Again, that's a team that's gone, and Sean Burke has done an outstanding job of improving the roster because they were not a good football team last year. They've got good football players in Ottawa now, and I think tonight is going to be a it's going to be a great game to watch on TV because that Ottawa crowd makes it a tough place to play. Yeah, and I think it is going to be sold out. And by the way, I don't know where you are on betting, but Bet Regal, our exclusive betting partner, CFLs as well, has Bombers favored by 2.5 going in there. How do you, uh, and by the way, the Alouettes covered last night because the Argos were favored by 3.5. So Al's at least, or sorry, they beat the spread. How do you feel about Winnipeg favored by 2.5 tonight? Well, I think Winnipeg, when you look at them, they they feel coming out of the Ottawa game that they got away with one because they didn't play very well. And, you know, they weren't very dynamic on offense. Where I look at them and I'm concerned about them, Rod, is who are their playmakers offensively, right? I, I mean, who do you have that can make that big play, make that big run? Their running game was ineffective. Uh, you know, they really saw, you know, just how much they relied on, you know, Harris last year. And then outside at wide receiver, Ellingson's a great receiver and he's played extremely well through his league, through the league, but he's not a guy that's going to catch a five yard hitch and and turn it into an 80 yard touchdown. So they've got to find some dynamic players on offense. And then I think defensively, they'll settle in. They made too many mistakes in the secondary. They were looking in the backfield, got beat on double moves. You know, Dubois, who's really a tight end, not a wide receiver, runs right past Rose on on a play action pass. They just didn't play very well in the secondary. I think they'll get that cleaned up. But um, again, Winnipeg, to me, is a team that needs to run the football. Those big offensive linemen that they have and Calaris is best when he has play action and can move the pocket. So as that football team, that again this week. They've got to show that they can run the football, whether it's Johnny Augustine or who it is in the backfield. They've got to find a running game. Uh, from the viewers, John Ohm, Ohm watching in Winnipeg says, great to see Jeff. No fear, Reinbold. From Clay in Brandon, Reinbold is a great pick for a regular CFL guest. He's amazing. Absolutely. And uh, we're looking for a partner to bring you Jeff Reinbold every week. Coach, we haven't even talked about Saturday's game, so would you mind sitting tight for a second? We'll come back and talk about the the doubleheader on Saturday. All right. Coach Reinbold joining us from Hawaii. But we've got the coach with us, Coach Reinbold, CFL treasure, football treasure, joining us from Hawaii. And, Coach, if you don't mind, we'll jump into that Calgary-Hamilton game, the first of a doubleheader on Saturday at Tim Hortons Field, the Hall of Fame game. It's not going over well in Hamilton. The Ticats are 0-1. Are the fans have reason to be as upset as they are? with the week one showing. Well, you know, there's there are big expectations in, in, ha- in the hammer because, you know, they return an awful lot of players off a team that, you know, probably should have won the great cup last year. And, you know, when you look at the expectations, you, you, you say offensively, first of all, you know, you got to be able to protect the quarterback. And I feel sorry for Mike Gibson. Mike Gibson's a hell of an offensive line coach. And right now he's got a chewed up bunch of guys, you know, they, they've lost, player after player through through the preseason. They may have to start two Americans on the offensive line this week, you know, just to fill the holes. And that's going to impact the ratio. You know, um, they lost an awful lot of good football players. We watched Brandon Banks last night score a touchdown in his first game with the Argos. We see Jalen Acklin doing his thing in Ottawa. Those are guys, you know, they're tough to replace. 
and they've got good young players, but those good young players have got to now actualize on game day. And, you know, Dane was absolutely had no chance. I mean, no chance in the Saskatchewan game. Eight sacks, Rod, eight, and it could have been 10. And, you know, other than a blown coverage, they don't score a touchdown against Saskatchewan. Now, Saskatchewan's got a good defense, but you got to be able to do better than that if, you're, if you expect you're going to the Great Cup. Uh, this is a big, big week for them, and it's a good Calgary defense they're going to face at home. Uh, so about those Stampeders, Bo uh, nicked up last week, but I guess he's going to start. There's a lot of criticism of Bo, and I don't know how much film you watch on him because you're a special teams guy, but is he slowing down? The, they're trying to purport a narrative that he is. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a junkie, Rod, so I'm going to watch every – I'd watch tape on, on, you know, a midget league game. <laughs> I just, that's the way I am. And, but I've known Bo since we recruited him at the University of Hawaii. He was uh, committed to come to the University of Hawaii with us. And then we went to SMU and he came to SMU and was there for the first two years of his career. I know the kid very well. The injuries have started to take a little bit of a toll, right? You watch him in the pocket now. He's a different guy. He's, he's matured. You know, those guys that get hit, they understand. You know, it's, it's about being able to play through a whole season. The good thing, if you're Calgary, is you've got a guy waiting in the wings. And Mayor, that went into that game last week. And did a great job. And so you feel, I'm sure Dave feels real good about his quarterback situation. Again, looking at them, you want to have a playmaker outside. I like their running game. I like, you know, again, I think their back is one of the better backs, Kadeem Carey in the league. Uh, you know, that young receiving course, Sindani's starting to play at a high level. They've got to find a couple other weapons. When they do that, they'll be real good. Calgary knows how to win. They're going to play solid defense. They're very good in the kicking game. They don't beat themselves. So I think this is going to be a really, really close game in Hamilton. Um, Hamilton obviously have to beat at home, and they need to get this win. It's crazy to say that, you know, two weeks into the season, but nobody wants to start 0-2. New and Ty Cats favored by one for the betters out there by bet regal they're telling me 90 seconds we're leaving best for last sask at edmonton jones versus fajardo what has you excited about this game you know what i'm i'm disappointed with chris because he backed off his statement about fajardo's throwing ability and you know tried to you know i after you give up 60 i think you do some of those things a little bit you look at this one and you just see two teams headed in absolutely different directions you got to give saskatchewan a lot of credit because they build a good roster that is a good foot they have they got you know larry dean back off that achilles tendon they're dominant up front on defense they're strong they're physical it's a big football team look at the wide receivers rod you know one of the one of the criticisms you can have of cody is he's not the accurate guy so what does jeremy go out and do what does dicky go out and do they go out and get all big receivers why because those big guys with that, with those long arms, six three, six four guys like Duke and Shaq, they have great catching range. So a guy who's maybe not the most accurate guy in the world, those guys will go up and get the ball. We saw it last week when Evans got the touchdown over Leonard down in the corner of the end zone. It was just a size mismatch. Coach, uh, guys, if we can just hang on a sec with the credits, Coach, we got to just talk about coffee with the coach, where people can follow you and watch. Go to Coffee with Coach on Twitter. It's on. Uh, it, it's all over the place. It's a podcast that we do just like you. We're trying to be just like you. Yeah. So hopefully, we'll be back here next week talking more CFL football. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you. All right, brother. Take care.